morning welcome back to the channel exciting day because i believe we've just got the hint now of autumn approaching so obviously i'm in the woodland and woodland in autumn is just fantastic really enjoyed last year can't wait for this year uh, i'll come back to a woodland that i've been exploring over the last month or so I shot the dragonfly video from here. I shot the uh, video about why I bought the Olympus camera from here. And I also shot the silent uh, woodland video where I don't talk, which I really love, but nobody seemed to watch from here. And that was a brilliant, brilliant day. So this is a couple of weeks later, and I've decided that I'm gonna go further on into the woods because I really only touched the surface last time I was here, so I've come in, it's quite a big wood, it's a wood that hardly anybody, as far as I can see, goes to, so, so, top, so, so quiet, um, and it's a pine forest, there are silver birches in here, and the odd beech, and a load of bracken, which you can see behind me, which turns brown first, so it's the first thing that goes, we've got green and brown on the understory, a couple of weeks we might get a little bit the yellow and orange but for now this is what we're working with and I really love in a pine forest the mint green kind of color I love the kind of mistiness that hangs around and I love the light on the side of the lovely bark that we have and what I tend to look for um, because this is going to be another kind of how I do woodland not how you should do woodland how I do woodland whether you get any value out of that, it's really, and you can tell. But what I look for in woodland like this, I'm looking for little patches of light in the distance where the light is shining through the canopy and it lights up some more. I can see a bit here now. And I'm also looking for contrasts. So we've got the straight pines that are kind of in a row almost. And then dotted in between, we have silver birches, small little saplings different kind of shapes that you can play with. There's one behind me, I'm not sure you can see it, but it's what attracted me to this particular part and I've stopped. So this is almost always gonna be done with a long telephoto. And I talked about using a, a 200 mil for this. Uh, I've also got the 100 to 400 in the back, just in case I need it, because I know a lot of the guys that I admire, um, Steve, Martin, use, uh, Darren, they use long telephotos for this. So I'm gonna, I've got it in the bag to use. I don't normally use it, I'll be honest. Normally a 200 mil normally is fine for me. So that's just the way I see. But um, I've got some Woodland Camera Club talks coming up, of which I already have a presentation, but just wanna see if I can add some images to that uh, for people to enjoy. So um, I've got a photograph over the back of me, I've just said, let me set myself up. I'll talk you through what we're doing this morning. So this first image that I'm looking at shooting is this old tree stump, I don't know what it is, it's not a pine, um, or it certainly wasn't a pine, a big old thing just sat there and it kind of, it's that idea about these ramrod straight pines and something unusual sitting in the middle of it, it's almost like it shouldn't be there, which I quite like. Um, there's some nice light in the distance, uh, and I talked, I've talked to you already about that, I look for pockets of light that are coming in because it lightens up the background. The backgrounds are really important. You're almost doing a portrait of this whole thing, to be honest, is what I'm doing. Um, only slight issue I have, there are some little branches that are coming out from the floor, which are just almost sticking into the composition. They are so tiny that I can't really see them uh, through the camera and they may, in fact, be out of focus anyway. Uh, but if, if they do interfere, a little bit, I might just take them out 
with the clone tool. So I'm actually gonna get my camera really high, which is a good tip anyway. I like to get it really high, get rid of the sky. Um, it gets me over those branches and also gets me looking down onto this old monster sat in the woods here on its own. Um, He's got some nice light on him. There's a little bit of mist in the air, very slight, um, very, very slight. We haven't really got fog at all, but early mornings in the woodland, you always get this kind of condensation hanging around. So it does add to the atmosphere a little bit. So um, probably another cropped image and you know if you're if you're a familiar follower of the channel you know that i like a 65 24 crop and i talk about it a lot in my camera club talks and how it works really well for me so i'm going to carry on with that in mind but obviously i'll shoot it full frame because that's what the nikon does so i'll shoot it full frame and then we'll have a look at the crop tool when we get into lightroom right so here we go right quite high up as you can see this is me almost a full stretch so that's where you're at um, I just tilted down the screen so I can see it and I also want to talk about the fact that with this I've used a technique called exposed to the right you'll see the histogram is bunched up to the right there um, the exposure is showing a third of a stop overexposed but actually it isn't um, it, the reason why I go to exposed to the right in forest is because I don't know whether you can see this kind of misty effect that you get in the background I really, really like that. It's really high key, but also what it will allow me to do is all of the shadow detail. You can see on the left of the histogram here, all of the shadow detail is in this frame. So there's gonna be nothing in the blacks at all that I can't bring out uh, and work with. And I could expand this a touch just to give it a little bit more contrast, but I really like that effect. Now, actually, when I came to process this, I decided that high key didn't really suit the composition. And that happens sometimes. Um, I've still got the light in the background, but I felt that the big fallen monster of a tree deserved to be a little bit darker. So I've darkened it right, right down. But the fact that I've exposed to the right means that I can still bring out as much shadow detail as I like. They've not bunched in together. And the actual final image kind of works, I think. What do you think? in the bag happy with that let's move on see what else we can find so i've got another example of the sort of thing that i look for in a pine forest here um i don't know what you can see but it's a very delicate what is it i don't know what sort of tree it is it might be a beech but it's it's kind of a small sapling it's leaning over making a beautiful curved shape and that it's about it being delicate and fragile in amongst these big giant trunks which seem to be almost protecting it or maybe it's in a kind of a palace or something um, and there's a little bit of fern underneath it which has gone up going orange and brown and I'm just looking really the thing I haven't got which I'd like is a bit of light behind it because I've got no separation um, and I've got two choices I'm going to use I can use a wide open aperture as much as I can to throw the back one out of focus. Three choices, I could do something in processing or I could just wait for the light. My preference would be to wait for some light. It's quite an overcast day today. I was gonna go out last night and, and try and shoot some star trails, but cloud was got about 50-50. So I decided not to and probably pleased that I didn't because I'm, when I woke up early this morning, complete blanket of cloud. So we haven't got any mist, we haven't got any light, uh, and there's no guarantee that if we do get some light, it's gonna be in the right place. So I'm gonna take my time, I'm gonna work on this, but I'm certainly gonna shoot it uh, almost wide open on the lens and as telephoto as I can get it, which also helps with that separation a little bit. Uh, and we'll see, we'll see what we can get. Um, as far as subjects are concerned, often it's quite a good idea to walk around the subject, see what looks best. But with this, I'm focusing on this curve, so there's really no point. The only other place I could go is traipse through the woods that way and shoot back this way. But the light over here is no better than the light over there, really. So 
I think we, I think this is going to be a shot that's okay, but probably not portfolio, that kind of size. But I do like it enough to shoot it. Uh, and I do want to capture this little tree because I might shoot him or her again. Right, the setup. I'll show you what I'm doing. It's a shame. It's not really working as far as what I want from this. Let me just show you in here. So look, that's what it's looking like. That's at f6.3, which is pretty much wide open. And we have got a little bit of separation, a little bit of mist in the background. Um, the tree itself is not really showing up. There's lots of other greens around, but what I could do is try and select it and make it a little bit darker, just to make it stand out. All I can really do in the field though is, is focus really carefully on it. So I'm focusing on, on the tree trunk just about, where's my finger? about there is where I've got pinpoint focusing and I'm focusing mainly to make sure it's really sharp and then I'm using wide open and I've gone to about 100 millimeter on this which is as close as I want to go because I want to include some of the background because I want enough of the background to be out of focus to make it stand out I don't want to go in really close I want to capture the whole um, the whole of the tree really and it is beautiful the light is just improving a little bit, so maybe it's just worth hanging about. So I've got 10 minutes or so, so I'm gonna stop and just wait and see what happens. But whatever happens, here comes the picture. Let me know what you think. Okay, so maybe just one more picture. Just walking back to the car and the lights come out and generally the light coming out can spoil it because they get big hot spots. But actually today it's been really good because it's just side lighting. It's just gone in a little bit now, but it's just side lighting this silver birch in the middle of this little clearing here. And I've got a feeling almost of a bit of mist in the background. I don't think it is. I think it's the fact that the, the trees are a light green and they kind of feel a little bit damp, but um, I think we can still create that in, in post-processing. So I'm gonna have a little look at that. We're gonna do this as a 65 by 24 crop, I think, as I like to do. Uh, and it's silver birch, which looks a bit more robust than the previous one. So it's a bit more of a teenager, but he's sitting beside this big pine tree. We've got this lovely carpet of ferns, some browns and greens coming into it, which I really like. Uh, and the background looks really lovely. So F8, maybe F11 on this, just to get the two trees in. But I might shoot one wide open as well and decide which one I like best. Um, but I love this little silver birch. It looks really, really lovely. So let's wait for the light. I'll shoot this and I'll put it on the screen for you. Well, I'm going to end it there. Um, really enjoyed today. Now, I haven't taken any I would consider fantastic images. I think there's been some good images and I hope you've enjoyed me explaining my thinking behind them. Um, now, you may think differently. You, you may disagree with some of the things that I've uh, said and done today, but that's fine, isn't it? Because there's no real rules for photography. Just go and shoot what you enjoy shooting and what you like and what catches your eye. And certainly I've, if nothing else, had a great walk in the woods. I love this place, it's so nice. I saw one person today, it's the first time I've seen anyone. Um, but I've also discovered that there's a big dense section of silver birch. So it's a bit of a scouting mission. And I've also discovered that I actually prefer the pine forest bit the pine forest section. Uh, 
better, which is handy because it's closer to the car. But um, everybody likes different things. And actually it's good to have days where pitches are okay and not brilliant because that makes the days when the pitches are brilliant, in your opinion, so much more special. You know, you have to work really hard for this sometimes. Uh, and that winning image that you get has taken a great deal of work. And without putting in the yards and the practice and getting used to your gear, then all of that doesn't really happen. So carry on getting out there, carry on shooting. It's a brilliant thing to do. Next week I'm in, I'm hoping to be in Home Fen, which is a big woodland in Peterborough. I'm meeting Martin and Colin for the first time and I'm hoping Steve can get there. He's had lots of trouble with cars and stuff. And he's, his fleet of cars have let him down, but I'm hoping Steve can get there. And we're gonna have a bit of fun photographing him in that old ancient woodland. Um, by the way, Steve, Martin, Cole, Colin and I are uh, admin for a group called Thumbs Up Photography. I was really honoured to be asked to become an admin. I was really pleased. We're trying to do an exhibition. So if you know anywhere we can exhibit work, please get in touch. Um, but if you haven't joined and you're looking for a Facebook group where lots of landscape photographers and all sorts of other genres actually, friendly bunch, loads of banter. Um, we talk about where we're going. You find out loads of locations. We share lots and lots of information. So if you're looking for a decent Facebook group, thumbs up photography, come and check us out uh, and ask to join and I'll let you in. Okay, so that's it from today. Here come the images. Look after yourselves. Look after your ones you love. Like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in Home Fen next week. ta -da. Bye. I'm not afraid of losing what I've found If all the fallen pieces hit the ground I see it in your eyes My lover and my bride I love to steady tide A story speaks and silences my love